There is a lot of noises in these woods. What was that noise? Oh, oh shit, you can't waste good balls. This is definitely odd. I don't like it. I swear to God, that was footsteps. What the fuck was that? I've never wanted the morning to come as much as I do right now. After an unusually long festive break, the enforced and relentless social activity that is Christmas had taken its toll. I hit the road. Two nights of solitude camping in the woods was what I was seeking and I was hoping to find it here, Daring Woods. Located in the southeast of England, this woodland sits just outside of a little village called Pluckley. Now, completely unknown to me when I arrived, Pluckley is Britain's most haunted village. In fact, with over 14 known ghosts, it has a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records confirming it's the most haunted place in the UK. If I'd have bothered with a quick Google search before I left, I would have seen these concerning articles. This one about the woods itself is my personal favourite. It goes on to read. The ghost of a local highwayman robber who is captured, lynched and decapitated by angry villagers in the 18th century is said to wander the woodlands. However, the most terrifying stories about this woodland are undoubtedly the modern ones and do not involve ghosts but disturbingly unexplained deaths, murders and disappearances. Hmm. And I'm going to be staying here, alone, in a tent. I want to get the tarp up as quick as possible really because I think at some point this evening this weather is going to turn. When you burn the ends off a paracord, I don't know if anyone else gets this, but can you see, can you see what that looks like? Right, camp is set. I wanted to get everything set up before the rain comes, which is just in the nick of time, I think. But we've got the tarp over there, uh, hammock, obviously, because I'm in the woods there. Very excited to be sleeping in the hammock again. Want to test out some new gear, so I've got my sleeping bag, some bits and bobs. If the rain does get bad, I'll probably move the hammock underneath the tarp, even though the hammock copes just fine in the rain. I've used it before in the rain, but it would be nice to have a bigger shelter. But we'll see how we go. I just wanted to get a set and get everything packed away, cameras and stuff out of the rain, which is coming. Oh, you can get wet, get wet, get wet, get wet. This camera doesn't do it justice, but it is getting pretty dark now, so I best crack on. I want to get an early night because I want to do some proper exploring tomorrow. I don't know if you can hear that, but obviously they're out shooting. I'm also under a flight path, so if you get any noise, it's the aeroplanes. Dinner tonight is gonna to be a simple affair. Meatballs and pasta out of a packet, love it, but I've got something much better planned for tomorrow night, but it's getting late, so quick and easy, just how we like it.
Gas, I haven't got any gas. Gas, 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 gas. Idiot, what was I going to cook without gas, you prat noise? I don't be a knob. The owls are out already. But I can see a bit now. Oh, bollocks, that's a meatball. You only get a few in there. A bit alright. Don't judge me, there's only about four in here. Maybe five. You can't waste good balls. Anyway, not bad, not bad at all. Could have done with a bit more in it, mind. Now, pudding. Pudding is not that glamorous either. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see. A Cadbury's pot of joy. Yogurt, basically. Chocolate yogurt. There is a lot of noises in these woods. Where's my spoon? It's getting cold. Oh! <laughs> Get that fire going, I think. Now the rain. I think the rain stopped. Well, it stopped enough for a fire, anyway. Sounds like kids screaming. That's oh, just a train. Is it a bird or is it kids screaming? That's a bird. That's a gunshot. I don't know if you'll be able to hear a lot of this. It's pretty distant, but it sounds like kids screaming. That temperature's definitely dropped now. I've had to put my woolly hat on and everything, but this is ideal. Honestly, I've never known the woods with so many strange noises. It's not just your normal birds and stuff and planes. There's a lot of planes. There's like this weird... Well, I don't really know how to describe it, but I'm tired, so I'm going to let this burn out in a bit, I sit here and enjoy a fire for a little while, and then, yeah, head to bed. The hammock's really comfy, thank God, so I should sleep well, I would think. Ooh. Where's my big beam? What was that noise? This is definitely odd. I've got no idea if you guys heard that or not, but honestly, I don't like it. I'm going to be honest. It's not deer. Like, I know what deer sound like. I've spent so much time with deer. Convinced there's 
always been a person or persons. What the fuck? I've never wanted the morning to come as much as I do right now. Turn the light on earlier because I swear to God that was footsteps. That's just the house though. This is definitely the scariest night I've ever had in a tent. I'm sure I can still hear footsteps. And trains. I dropped the tarp down last night because I knew it was going to rain so it would keep my wood dry and wouldn't pull up the water but I've just realised I left my axe out now if there had been an axe murderer wandering around I've literally handed him his weapon of choice Idiot Louise There is a public footpath just over here somewhere probably quite a few more yards yet at first, I thought perhaps someone from the footpath had got lost and wandered in. That was the first time at two o'clock in the morning. When it happened again at three and then again around 3.20, I decided it's definitely not just a lost dog walker at that silly o'clock. So, yeah, don't know what it was, but there was definitely someone walking around this tent. It was no way was it a deer or a fox or any kind of mammal. The footprints were all wrong. Safe to say I did not sleep very well at all. It had been a long and mostly sleepless night, but with the weather looking okay, I wanted to make the most of my time. I walked back to the van to grab my camera and long lens, and a, a quick and uh, healthy breakfast. Nick these from Emily's Christmas stash, ain't I? Look at all them bad boys. You cannot beat ah, a Christmas biscuit for breakfast. There is absolutely no signal or phone service in these woods whatsoever, but I could pick up the van's Wi-Fi. Even in Emily's absence, I wanted to give you some fun facts about this area, so to trust the old Google, I went. It was at this point that I realised. No. No way. Most haunted village in England. Ghost hunts and interactive ghost walks. It's in the flipping Guinness Book of World Records. 
Look at that, the woods I was in last night, the creepy, noisy woods. You can book, it's so haunted, you can book a ghost tour. It's in the Guinness World Record books for the most ghosts. It said here, between 12, 12 and 14 known ghosts. I don't know what a known ghost is. Ghost Hunters, you know the TV programme Ghost Hunters have been here. No way. What on earth? It's not every day you see an old truck in the middle of nowhere. I've got absolutely no idea how this old Bedford truck would have got here. It's a pretty cool thing to find, but there is like, we're not even near a road. We are literally in the middle of the forest, well, the woods. I don't even know how it would drive through all these trees to get here, it's mental. I'll tell you what though, a bit of a clear out inside and it'd be a wicked place for a wild camp. With that skylight on the roof acting as a window, because it's on its side, it would make a brilliant wildlife photography hide. Definitely reckon I could get my hammock in the corner up there and then across on the angle. What a cracking little spot to camp out that would be. Absolutely mental. What with the awful night's sleep. Finding out I'm in the most haunted village in England, which I'll fill you in a bit more on later, and now wasting a load of time reading articles about that and that Bedford truck. I've probably left it a bit too late in the day, really, for any chance of wildlife photography. I wasn't wrong. With the exception of this one obliging squirrel, my wildlife photography was a bust. Traipsing through the woods all day, though, had made me rather hungry. Right then, for dinner tonight, we are attempting steak and chips. And we all know I'm not a good cook, so it could go one of two ways. We're also going to be having mushrooms and sweet corn with it. So I'm quite excited and hopefully, ho oh shit, hopefully it all works out. Five seconds. Now today, that's definitely dogs. Do like a raw mushroom. So my plan is to part boil these potatoes and then just fry them off and I think that'll work. I've gone for a bit of a early start with dinner today. Two reasons. One, I'm starving because all I've had is those uh, biscuits from earlier. And two, because I want to be done and settled and packed away and cleared up before it gets dark after reading all them ghost stories. If we get them noises again. Now I'm not a believer. I'm not a believer at all. But I'm telling you, this place is eerie. There's definitely a vibe about it. We've got the mushrooms, the potatoes, keeping warm in there, steaks on the go. You're all going to judge me because I like my steak medium well, I like, or even well done. I like it properly cooked, none of this blood for me. Not had a steak for a very long time, so it's going to be interesting. I can't wait if I'm honest. Got around Tommy K. Oh, there you go then, steak and chips. What do you reckon? I reckon I've done all right, you know. Chips, good. Mushrooms, good. 
week will be good. Steak. Oh, it's just going to focus on me, and I don't want it to get cold to move the camera, but it looks good. Tastes good. I'm not afraid to say it myself, that steak dinner was good. I ate the lot. I'm not going to lie, I've got belly ache, but I don't think that's food poisoning. I think I've just eaten too much for pudding. I've had a right touch as well. Oh, it's stuck in the pot. I've got Emily's homemade cheesecake. Look at that. So I don't know what flavour it is, like maybe white chocolate or something. But it is... It is nice. They give the temperature getting down to about two degrees tonight, which out here will probably be about zero. I really wanted to check out my new sleeping bag in the actual cold before I go anywhere with it like miles away from civilization, just so that I know if I can cope. I was so warm last night, didn't need it to be honest. But to tell you the truth, <laughs> I'm not sure, I don't know, if them noises come back, now I've read all them ghost stories, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to stay the night. It's a stunning woodland and I do want to wake up here in the nature. When I went on my walk earlier, I didn't get any pictures or footage, but there's loads of deer, so much wildlife, it would be awesome. And I think tomorrow it's going to be dry and calm and still and frosty, which would be ideal, but we'll see. Oh no! That's twice this trip. I dropped the lid off the cheesecake right on my shoe. Look, that's last night's meatball, and that's tonight's cheesecake. Useless. Oh, needed this tea. Right then folks, I do hope that you can see me. It's very, 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 very dark. I've got myself some candles though. Nick them out of Emily's Christmas stash. Shush, don't tell her. When I was putting the stuff back in the loft, I just swiped myself a couple of candles. It is a lot better here tonight. And I'll tell you why. We've got a little bit of moonlight, not lots, but I can kind of see. And I can hear the deer. Now these are familiar noises. So when I can hear familiar noises, I'm a lot more comfortable than those weird stuff I was getting last night. But you know, it's early, so we'll see. Hopefully the noises won't come and we'll feel a lot more comfortable chilling here by the fire, although I'm a bit close. Sorry if I'm a bit like bright on one side, I'll be red on one side in a minute. But I brought my ukulele with me because I was hoping for some quiet time playing, oh, it's out of tune, playing some tunes. But last night, I just, if I'm honest, I didn't want to draw attention to myself and that is because now, oh shit, still a little bit jumpy. That is because now I know I'm in the most haunted place in the whole of England. Now Pluckley, the village itself which is haunted, is less than a mile stone's throw away from where I am and then this is the most haunted woods. When I was at the van earlier I picked up some screenshots of some of the ghosts. Uh, I've probably already mentioned it at some point in the video now. 14 minimum known ghosts, known ghosts. Uh, and I am in, or very near to, Screaming Wood. Screaming Woods, so this is where you can come for um, ghost walk tours and they'll take you around the woods and show you all the stuff. But basically, the journey through the woods is made even spookier than the skeletal trees, which we've seen in the area. Many lone wayfarers who have come this way have been scared witless by sudden, loud, anguished scream. What was I hearing last night? Screams. It comes from deep within the woods and sends the birds flapping from the trees. Well, the crows were having a right old fanfare first thing this morning, so... Yeah, that's where we are. That's where we slept last night. Talking to you, I have to be very loud so you can hear me over the fire. So I'm going to make this quick because I was all right until I started gobbing off at you. The Black Horse Inn, that's the local pub. That is haunted. All kinds of stuff's gone in there. Uh, the barman, no, the landlady. No, it's the glass on the shelf above the bar. Moved just a little. As she watched it, she was astonished when it began to slide along the length of the shelf, stopping when it reached the edge. An unseen hand that lifted cutlery from the dresser and arranged it neatly on the side. A spot in the kitchen where the pet dogs would stop abruptly and bark at something or someone that only they could see. Now, dogs do do that, and kids. Oh, it's getting hot. Grey stones, that's near here. That is haunted by a monk who drifts among the surrounding trees. I am sat in trees. All right, this is the last one I'm gonna, gonna read you because it's freaking me out. So this monk is reputed to have fallen in love with the daughter of a neighboring property. She died under tragic circumstances and he sank into a state of melancholy and bitterness. 
His only solace was to walk the green fields and leafy lanes where they enjoyed so many romantic interludes together. That's a posh way of putting Nookie, isn't it? As time passed, he sank deeper into depression, pining for his dead lover, and finally died of a broken heart. It's pretty sad. His ghost, however, continued to wander the neighbourhood and was last seen oh, this is quite a while ago, 1989. So yeah, pretty spooky place that I've found myself in. If you are into ghosts or ghost stories, or you just want to check out if this really is the most haunted place in the UK, then just Google Pluckley or Pluckley Village. Daring Woods, yeah, well, Daring Woods is quite big, but I'm right near that screaming wood, and that's where I'm staying. And yeah, it is, um, it's spooky. My current view as a lookout over camp, as you can imagine, knowing what I know now, being alone in the woods is a little bit eerie. I just want to quickly show you one thing. I think I got a shot of it last night in my petrified state when I was trying to be quiet. Let's see if I can find it in the dark. There's camp way over there and as I came around the corner when I was walking about last night, tell me, oh focus, tell me that that doesn't look like a child's face or two children. So as I came around I had my head torch on and I walked like that and literally just jumped out of me. Scary shit that is. And it is definitely cold now. I don't know if you can see all that smoke. Lovely by the fire though. This is why I, want, I don't want to get into bed yet. I want to sit out, chill, trip over my guy lines and enjoy the fire. If I can get packed away dry, I'm going to be more than happy. Weather weren't too bad last night, a bit of rain, but most of this is just condensation. And I think, looking at the sky, I've probably got time. So hopefully, there's nothing worse than packing away wet and then having to get it all out when you get back home. So, with any luck, this weather will hold off. And I've already packed away all the big stuff and walked half of it up to the van already. Sorry I didn't bring you along, but I just, like I say, nothing worse than packing away wet. I've got to tell you, I slept pretty well last night. It wasn't too cold, unfortunately. Probably only about two, I reckon. And then the rain came, so once the cloud come in, that's it, it warms up, doesn't it? But the bag so far has done really well. Quite happy with that. And not too many eerie noises. In fact, quite the opposite of eerie noises. At one point, the only point I was a bit concerned is it went deathly silent. Now, this is a noisy woods. There's a road over there. There's planes and stuff going overhead. There's owls, obviously the deer very very noisy woods and it just went completely silent did not like that no, not the most elegant of looking but it will do the steaks may be fat I just got the two tarps that are left there, a bit damp, but I'm pleased because I managed to pack everything away off the ground because obviously it picks up with the dirt and everything's dry, so I just need to hang those out and my um, guy lines, and that's it. Pretty impressed with that. They'll dry in no time. I just got to grab the camera as well. Uh, oh, bollocks, and I've got the tripod. Um, on that note, this is where I'm going to leave you up because I haven't got hands for all these things. I do hope you've enjoyed camping in England's record-breaking most haunted forest. It's the most scared I've ever been camping. I've had a great time 
albeit somewhat scared, but I still don't believe in ghosts. I do think there must have been an explanation for those footsteps around the tent for hours. I just can't think of one just yet. And also, what do you do in these situations? Like I was laying there thinking, do I open the tent and have a look? Am I best to just lay silent? And the one thing with this hammock, it's noisy. So if I move, it makes a noise. So it was, um, yeah, it was a bit, <laughs> it was a bit dubious, but I've got a big ax and a big knife. So hopefully if anything bad happens, I can kind of, I guess they don't know what they're opening the tent to find either, so that does make a difference. Anyway, blah, 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 waffling away. If you've enjoyed this video, please do consider hitting the subscribe button. It means the world, and I will see you soon when I'll be back in the van on the next adventure.